If you've been paying close attention, you know that I did not make good on something I said I was going to do, and that is streaming the CMS iRacing Team Endurance Series race that Rob Cottle and I had at Jerez. Why is that? Well, I actually started to stream it, but um, in the midst of qualifying for that race, my machine crashed with a black screen crash. Um, basically, all three of my primary monitors connected to my NVIDIA card just went black. And the machine completely froze, non-responsive, couldn't do anything. That's not good. So immediately I, I power cycled the machine to get it to come back up, got it everything back up, got re uh, uh, joined the session, all, all good stuff, and um, started to qualify again. And about a third of the way into the lap, same thing, black screen crash. Of course, I want to be responsible. I don't want to take anybody else out in the middle of the race. So until I know more about what's causing this crash, um, I talked to Rob and I said, you know, we shouldn't grid. And he agreed. And we both, uh, well, we missed the race. And that's unfortunate and sad. And I had started streaming and uh, wound up uh, stopping that stream with the crash. And um, I deleted the VODs um, associated with that, both on YouTube and Twitch, because obviously there's nothing interesting to see there. But I wanted to take a minute to A, explain to you what had happened um, and the fact that I won't be streaming or um, doing really intensive videos for a little while um, and tell you why. And um, then... I got to thinking is that there were some aspects of this that um, I think are useful in terms of just diagnosing problems um, and recovering from them in as best a way as possible that I wanted to share with you. The first thing that is on that list of things that is always a, just a good reminder for everybody is have a backup plan. Um, and that actually is twofold, right? One is to actually truly, like literally have backups. If you're not backing up your system, something bad goes wrong or you have to move to a new system, how are you going to get all that hard work of configuration back? How are you going to get your data back? And uh, so you need to have backups. And uh, personally, I use ARC, um, A-R-Q is how that's spelled. Um, and I have a 16 terabyte um, external USB drive that I connect and use um, for that. And then I also use cloud backups of that backup. So I back up my backups. I really do. Um, in case anything horrible, catastrophic happens to that 16 terabyte drive, I need to be able to recover from that that disaster as well. So it's very important to have that because along the way, if things get corrupt or something breaks or you need to reinstall something, um, you have the ability to roll back to a known good situation um, with that backup. So critical that you have a plan there. If you don't have a plan there, develop a plan there, um, even for your gaming machines, because there's there's time invested in getting your setup just so, and losing that is a huge time suck to try to get back where you were. And sometimes you just can't ever get back to where you were because remembering all the stuff that you did, um, unless you're documenting it all along the way, which some people do, um, it's it's still, it's a, it's a pain. The second type of backup that I actually benefited from in this particular scenario, and this is an old habit that goes back to many, many years um, and, and is reflective of some of my background in IT, get a new system. Don't ever, ever get rid of the old system. It, it's really easy to say, oh yeah, I'm going to wipe that hard drive and I'm going to donate it or I'm going to you know, uh, sell the, the machine because I don't need it anymore. I've got the new shiny thing and I'm good to go. And that's that's one way of looking at it, especially if you have a limit of space or, you know, you don't don't have have the ability to hold on to that for for whatever reason. Maybe you you want to recoup some of your money that you've invested in a new machine uh, by selling the old one. And I totally get that. There are realities at play there. If you can, though, holding on to that machine um, gives you a fallback should something unexpected go wrong in your first year using the new machine. And that's exactly what happened to me is I've had this new machine for about nine months um, and it's got all the biz, bizwang, no, whizbang uh, features that I wanted in this, uh, this particular um, sim racing platform, but it, uh, it failed me uh, within nine months. I have a hardware problem um, in the machine and because it is a, uh, a water-cooled system um, through Origin PC. Um, they don't or they can't let me do the work myself. I have to ship it back to them. So I'm out of computer for probably a month. Um, and if I hadn't had uh, my old old rig machine sitting around, um, 
I'd be in bad situation right now for looking at Daytona 24 hours, which is next weekend. Um, so pretty happy that all it took was to power that machine up, get things plugged back in, update some stuff, and I'm back um, able to race. Maybe not as elegantly or as prettily as I was with the new machine, but because obviously there's a reason I upgraded, but uh, at least I'm back on the road, which is important. Um there are a lot of things when when you have a problem um it's really frustrating when you have a problem and you don't really know what's going on and it's in, incredibly important especially if you're dealing with a system integrator um, to reduce the cycle times um to be able to diagnose and reproduce um, some of your issues so reproducing an issue is one of the key things to basically be able to say okay definitively under these conditions i can reproduce this issue over and over and over again sometimes intermittent issues are are just horrible to diagnose because you you can't quite figure out what's going on because it doesn't happen all the time um so having tools at your disposal like the uh, 3d mark and cinebench stress tests um, memtest 86 is tremendously useful for ruling out memory related issues um of course, you, you, you need to make sure, you know, that you're um, looking at the problem and kind of a wide eye view and updating things like your BIOS and your um, uh, chipset firmware and all of those things to rule those out as potential problems because as software changes um, sometimes it ticks bugs in older firmware older bios that you know go oh wow there's a reason they updated the bios uh, because it actually relates to other sorts of things so rule those things out as well but reproducibility um, using tools like 3d mark memtest 86 cinebench um, invaluable in especially in load related issues, because those things all put load on the system in very specific ways. So you can begin to pinpoint what the cause of the problem is. And ideally you can produce a bug that produces a crash dump file that you can then um, open up and, and uh, get, get some pinpoint precision on exactly what's going on, which is the third thing. Diagnostics. Um, I um, have always been a fan of the windows debugger. Uh, win dbg that you can get through the microsoft sdk for windows and really really nice because if you have a dump file you can actually open it up and you can step through what the dump file is telling you and identify the exact module that caused the crash horribly useful because once you have that information then you can start going okay what are the specific things that i need to look at and in the specific steps to diagnose exactly where that problem is coming from. Is it the driver itself? Um, is it the hardware itself? And this actually allowed me in this particular scenario to figure out what I needed to do, like removing the driver completely uh, using a DDU tool um, was my first step. Um, and then reinstalling the driver cleanly um, in safe mode to get it up and running. Um, that was one of the first things that I did after I did all the other basic hardware diagnostic things. Um, and I was able to pinpoint that I could reproduce the crash even after having done that. Well, I rolled the driver back. I used the more stable studio version versus the game ready driver that NVIDIA produces, um, and tried different variations of that all kind of, you know, keeping the machine extremely clean and focusing on that area to ultimately find that the crash was reproducible regardless of the driver, um, regardless of anything else on the machine, which points to hardware. Um, very, very useful. The other thing that's kind of interesting, um, I don't remember ever having used this tool before um, when I was administrating large fleets of Windows machines um, in enterprise environments, a tool called the Reliability Monitor. Um, and this is a really, really neat tool because it's part of the Perfmon tool set. So if you get into an administrative um, uh, command prompt, you can type perfmon slash REL and launch the Reliability Monitor. And it provides a contextual view or a timeline view of the crashes on your system. And why this was useful um, to me is it really highlighted the fact that the problem has gotten progressively worse. The time between the crashes that I was seeing related to this, uh, this NVIDIA card were getting shorter and shorter um, as you get to present day. 
And that's incredibly useful to look at because you could see it was an intermittent problem that's getting progressively worse. So there's something going bad in the hardware. That's typically how hardware failures happen is it's, you know, a one-time thing and then it becomes progressively more, more frequent. And um, so that was really useful to see that, that context. All, all in all, though, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased that uh, Origin PC is working with me um, to RMA the, the hardware, ship it back to them, um, keep everything under warranty um, with this Hydro X cooled NVIDIA card. Um, and uh, Turnabout um, should be back up on my feet with the new system in a month or so. Um, and in the interim, I have my old machine to keep me on the track. So 2024. It's been an adventure so far, but it's also it's been better than it could have been, um, thanks to some planning and some forethought. And I wanted to share that with you in case you haven't had need to thankfully rely on any of this stuff. But maybe at some point, if you do, you'll be better prepared for this uh, this video. Thank you very much for your time and uh, continued good luck in your 2024. Thank you.